few updates from Gaza. Uh, oh, where is this? I had, I had a list of a few things. Okay, so, uh, you know, we don't hear a lot about it in the news right now because it's, it's you know, it's passe, it's people are bored with it, it's gone. But so let's hit a, but let's hit a few highlights. Uh, Israel still is, uh, is fighting, they're still fighting, significant fighting in the north of Gaza, where Israel is still trying to gain complete control of every part of the north. Remember, this is all very dense uh, urban areas, and uh, the areas in the north where there's still several uh, Hamas strongholds, which Israel is slowly cleaning out and, and, and destroying. Um, you might have seen video of uh, Al Assad University in the Gaza being uh, blown up yesterday, uh, and, and people were horrified Israel's blowing up universities. Uh, yes, Al Assad became a symbol of, of, uh, uh, of Hamas. It, it not only was there that many of Hamas uh, trained, uh, it was also uh, filled with guns, ammunition, rockets. Uh, and, uh, and an intelligence center, tunnels, of course, leading in and out of. Uh, I think one of the best things that Israel is doing right now is it is destroying not just Hamas, but the symbols of Hamas. I think it is important to destroy the, the, the symbols of Hamas power, uh, the, 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 the things that Hamas has built, the, the, uh, you know, anything associated with Hamas, including, by the way, the mosques, I've seen many destroyed mosques, and I'm cheering for that. It, it, it needs to be a, a complete destruction, a complete eradication of this view of the world, of a Hamas view of the world, of an Islamist view of the world. Right. Um, so uh, they're still fighting. So there's still fighting going on in the north. Uh, and um, uh, they keep popping up. They keep uh, uh, more and more resistance. And indeed, as I said, as I said the other day, this week has seen some of the heaviest resistance we've seen since the beginning. Um, uh, in the south, uh, Khan Yunus is the is the main town in which uh, Israel is operating right now. In the south, uh, in the south, uh, you have uh, a heavy concentration of Hamas in Khan Yunus. Uh, Israel has now surrounded Khan Yunus completely. Uh, troops have entered into the center of Khan Yunus, uh, and they are hunting down uh, the Hamas. Uh, yesterday, we saw video, uh, primarily from the north, but also from the south, of dozens of Hamas members surrendering or having been captured. Uh, and uh, a lot of the news media is freaking out because the pictures show dozens and dozens of men basically down to their underwear in long lines. There's even a picture of them on the, on the sand just outside uh, the city, uh, seated with Israeli soldiers standing above them. And the caption is, you know, something about uh, they're about to be assassinated, about, a, about, about to be killed and put into a mass grave by the Israelis, which is complete lie and complete made up. But it's the kind of stuff you see on Twitter and the kind of stuff, the kind of lies that are being circulated uh, by the West and by Hamas and by their sympathizers. Uh, anyway, you saw long lines of, of uh, uh, basically semi-naked men. Uh, what was interesting is all these men were, were military age. They were all uh, 20s, 30s, 40s maybe. Uh, there were no women. There were no children. There were no babies. There were no elderly, and yet people were making comparison between Israel taking, quote, hostages and Hamas taking hostages, which is, again, disgusting and despicable that the, the, the people are doing this and, and that they get away with it. Not that they get away with it in terms of being silenced, but they get away with it in terms of people not standing up to them. So what does the Geneva Convention say about prisoners of war? Now, I am not a big advocate of the Geneva Convention. But that's a standard that people, people use, right? So according to the Geneva Convention, prisoners of war may include the following. Members of armed forces, volunteer militia, including resistant movements, civilians accompanying the armed forces. All of these men are likely members of Hamas, affiliates of Hamas or Islamic Jihad, or people who are helping them out. 
When business surrenders, I'm quoting again from, from John Spencer, who did a whole thing about this, uh, about the Geneva. When business surrenders, some unofficially, unofficial, uh, right, um, uh, surrender or are captured, they immediately searched. Many militaries have internal processes. In the United States military, it's just a search, silence, segregate, speed to the rear for processing and safeguard. In Israel and Gaza, combatants often have weapons and explosives, suicide vests and such. So the tactic of the IDF has been for a long time when dealing with them is to have prisoners remove their clothing down to their underwear from a distance to ensure that they're not a threat to their captors or other prisoners. Once searched, prisoners of war are rushed to safe areas, safeguarded for processing, for intelligence and detainment. This includes collecting individual information, so prisoners' information can be submitted to you know, the, 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 the Red Cross and other institutions, but also so that intelligence can start screening them and interrogating them. Um, uh, these, all these stripped down uh, prisoners um, were all uh, put on, put on uh, uh, trucks and, and shipped off to prisons in Israel. Uh, to, they've had to expand the prisons and open up some new ones uh, in order to, to, uh, to facilitate all the uh, captured Hamas. They will go through interrogation by, uh, Israeli, uh, by, the, by the Israeli internal security, Shin Bet, and by uh, military intelligence uh, to gain any kind of intelligence about what is, where the leaders of Hamas are, where the tunnels are, uh, where, uh, where centers of command and control are, all of that stuff is going to be part of what they're going to be interrogated about. Uh, as I said, partial disrobing is standard practice in the Israeli military because of their experience with suicide bombers. Don't want to be, don't want to be uh, uh, stripped down when you're captured. Don't encourage a culture of suicide bombers. Um, so Israel's making real progress. Again, it is being super cautious, um, partially because of, of, uh, uh, of um, its own just war theory uh, indoctrination, and partially because uh, of the Israeli government's capitulation uh, to the uh, U.S. government's uh, pressure, uh, which I think is is absolutely wrong. They, I mean, not, the Israelis should be ignoring the Americans. They should stand up to Biden. They should do so proudly and vocally and constantly and in a clever PR way. They should not let the Americans slow them down. They should not let the Americans tell them how to fight a war. They should not let the Americans uh, 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 dictate to them. I mean, one of the things that has happened, just I was reading about it this morning, there's now indications that the Biden administration has told the Netanyahu government that they expect the war to be over by the end of the year. In other words, they're on a clock. They have three weeks. Now, what do you think this does? This basically inspires Hamas. It basically tells Hamas, if we can just hide, if we can just manipulate the battlefield in a way that our leaders do not get captured and we can sustain ourselves somehow, some way, for three weeks, whew, we are safe. This is horrific. Israel should repeat clearly and unequivocally that it will not accept the timeline for Biden or anybody else. It will do whatever it is, deems necessary to defend itself. This war will last as long as necessary. Israel will bomb whatever is necessary. It doesn't accept the UN's authority. It doesn't accept the United States' authority over it. That it is an independent country that would decide its own fate for itself. Of course, Biden is not the first American president to put such pressure on Israel. Uh, go back, uh, you know what, uh, uh, Richard Nixon, in 1973, Israel had the third Egyptian army, hundreds of thousands of Egyptian troops, surrounded, basically had cut off all water and food. They were in the desert. They were starting to have real water shortages. 
Over 100,000 Egyptian soldiers could have died. This is 1973. Israel had surrounded them. They had no way to, 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 to get food from or water. Richard Nixon called uh, Golda Meir and said, you open up a supply route to them. We demand that you open up a supply route to them. Golda Meir basically uh, called him back and she said, I'm sending you a list of every single Israeli soldier who is missing, who we believe is in captivity by the Egyptian military. We demand that every single one of them be seen by somebody from the Red Cross. Once that happens, once every single one of our soldiers is accounted for and has been seen by the Red Cross, then and only then will I allow water in. Nixon said, but you're going to have 100,000 or more Egyptian soldiers dying. And she said, then they will die. What do you think Richard Nixon did? Did he cut Israel off? Did, he, did, did the strategic reasons why the United States supports Israel change? No. He forced the Egyptians to accept Golda Meir's terms. Every single one of the prisoners was seen by a Red Cross. And then, and only then, did Israel permit water to be provided to the Third Army. Unfortunately, that's, I think, the last time an Israeli prime minister has actually stood up to an American when, uh, uh, when Ronald told the Israelis not to kill Yasser Arafat and to allow 6,000 Palestinian terrorists out of Beirut on safe passage on a ship to Tunisia. Israel said, yes, sir, we'll do what you say, Ronald Reagan. Of course, he promised them to, that he, he would support them not after the Marines were killed. He, tail between the legs, America retreated. In 1981 and 82, during the Second Intifada that we just talked about, Al Shawan twice or maybe three times had Yasser Arafat cornered, surrounded, in the crosshair, ready to be murdered, killed, not murdered, killed, self-defense. George Bush called him and said, uh-uh, can't kill can't kill us off. Retreat. Leave him alone. But buses are blowing up. Schools are blowing up. Children are being killed. Don't care. Leave him alone. And even Alex Sharon, who was one of the tougher prime ministers Israel's ever had, were true. He listened to Bush. So uh, this is uh, this is uh, throughout Israeli and uh, U.S. history. I've got a talk out there about, uh, you can find it on YouTube, about uh, the, 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 the horrific nature of the Israeli-American relationship and how America has crippled and continues to cripple and has crippled for decades Israel's ability to defend itself and how that only makes things worse for Israel and the United States long term. It's not unique to Biden. But Biden's in office right now, so to hell with him, right? He is the source of this. The U.S. needs to back off and let Israelis do what they need to do. They know exactly what needs to be done. I think Netanyahu, this is the one time when Netanyahu's political, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, power lust, political power lust, is consistent with doing the right thing because the Israeli people want him to do the right thing this time. Uh, this time, he knows that if he doesn't destroy Hamas, he is out. And if he does destroy Hamas, he's probably out as well, but at least that gives him a chance at political comeback. I hope he's out for good and forever, but his only hope of staying is to really, def really crush Hamas. So uh, his, his, his Netanyahu's survival instinct and his power lust uh, are now consistent with actually what the right thing to do is. So let him do it. Let it rip. And, and Israel should be a lot more aggressive than it is 
uh, because every day, every day, we hear about Israeli soldiers dying, and, and, and to a large extent, those deaths are not necessary. They're a result of the fact that Israel is holding its punches, particularly when it comes to bombing from the air.